So hello everyone, this is Ian Meyer coming to you from B-Sides Orlando. This is our first B-Sides pre-show, so we're putting together a series of talks to get excited about B-Sides Orlando on November 6th and 7th, and also to do more engagement with the community and bring people together more than just once a year. So I just want to talk a bit about B-Sides, if this is your first time even hearing about B-Sides or getting involved with B-Sides. B-Sides Orlando is part of the B-Sides framework. It's a series of conferences throughout the world that aims to bring people together, bring people uh, that might have not been able to go to bigger conferences, speak at different conferences, and create a more local and community-driven event to help people grow in information security. And uh, we want to make sure we thank our sponsors. We've got um, Black Hills Information Security, Active Countermeasures, Lockheed Martin, Trimark, ReliaQuest, uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, AMD, Research Innovations, Fortress Information Security, and our community sponsors as well, ISSA, Innocent Lives Foundation, Hack5, and ISC Squared Central Florida. So again, thank you for that. We've got more sponsors coming and a lot of really exciting things to talk to you about before November. But it is my distinct pleasure today to have Charlotte Woodrow and Tara Wheeler uh, on with us. And I'm going to bring them in right now and add them into the stream. And uh, we will talk with them in just a moment. So um, what I want to do here is we're going to be talking about the nerd list today. And Tara, you were the founder of the nerd list. You created it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the project and what it was for and just it's what, what got you into it? Absolutely. And thank you so much, Ian. This is a wonderful experience. And I love how creative our community is becoming today over uh, how do we bring people together? How do we uh, join and do this kind of research um, in information security when we can't get together at conferences right now? And it's super frustrating. That's actually a little bit of the spirit that caused me to originally want to do the nerd list. So uh, for those of you that aren't gigantic James Spader fans, what is wrong with you? And also, uh, I was taking a look one day at some of the, the word lists on Kali, a couple of the basic nerd uh, uh, word lists that were out there and said, I feel like there's a way to guess leet and admin passwords a little bit better. Um, one of the things that I think we all know is that if you took a random poll of 100 graduate students and asked them to choose a number between one and 100, more than one of them would choose 42, right? It's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. We as nerds, as admins, as techie people, we have these sort of shibboleths, these call-outs to culture that we have in our in our community. So hack the planet, um, C-Tech astronomy, uh, correct horse battery staple, these kinds of jokes, Hunter 2, they stick around in our community for a while. And often we have a, uh, a, a callback to them in the kinds of passwords we create. Sometimes those passwords have been around for a long, Long, long time, she said, having much uh, many, many years ago tripped over some FTP passwords like this for a local ISP. I swear it's it's fine. I didn't do anything wrong. So the uh, the nature of the nerd list was intended to be a simple list of passwords that were about our tendency to reuse nerd passwords. Um, and one of the things I wanted to see happen with it was people who had never made their first information security community uh, uh, commit to a GitHub project or ever contributed really to any kind of InfoSec project in public before get a chance to do that. I have been so excited. Um, I think I started in April 2018-ish, uh, just threw this up on my GitHub and uh, Ian will have the resources up for you as well. Um, I, I threw this up on my GitHub and I was so thrilled to see people joining in and making their very first commits to a GitHub project, doing something in public. It's hard and scary to commit to public code changes, code repos, when you know that there's a lot of people out there who want to gatekeep and critique you. So I wanted to make this as easy and fun as possible. What super blew my mind was how much people got into it um, and how successful they started being at actually cracking hashes in the wild with them. So, uh, about 
I think it was July 2019 of last year, I decided I wanted to do a talk on the nerd list. Uh, John Strand at Black Hills Information Society asked me to come to Wild West Hackenfest and present the nerd list as a project for the community to be involved in. My fabulous husband, uh, Deviant Olaf, decided to do a great bit of poster art for us for that project. Um, and we found ourselves being able to offer prizes for people who cracked hashes for the first time. Those prizes were silver Scrabble tiles. There's still a few of them left. And today we're gonna give the rest of them away. Uh, for folks who've never cracked a hash before, who've never cracked uh, or committed to a public infosec project or cracked a hash before, Charlotte is gonna talk today about what it takes to, um, to actually run a word list against collected hashes. So if you've never committed to an infosec project and you do so today, uh, I'm gonna send you Scrabble tiles and it's gonna be pretty fun. And if you actually crack a hash in public, I'm gonna send you a silver Scrabble tile and we'll give you the details a little bit later on about how you'll uh, get to claim your prize and commit to the GitHub repo in a bit. Cracking hashes is such a basic uh, form of offensive security that we often don't think of it as much as hacking anymore, I think. I think we think of it as sort of a basic exercise and yet it's so opaque to people outside the field. When I describe to somebody who's no, who doesn't understand that passwords aren't stored in plain text or they shouldn't be stored in plain text anymore, that they are hashed with an algorithm and that it's a one way password basically without the, the algorithm. I often explain to them uh, by using the omelet analogy, right? You know, once you've, once you've made the omelet, you can't put the, the, uh, the egg back in the shell. Well, the, the great analogy there is that actually with enough computers, you kind of can. That's the concept of brute forcing. If you could identify every molecule and reconvert it back to its original form and stick it back in the egg, you can do that with enough computers. Charlotte's gonna demonstrate a little bit about what that means today by taking the nerd list, which is gonna have some really familiar passwords to you folks. Um, and I think, I think the most thing, the thing I'm most proud of with this project is that Ian and Charlotte stepped aboard and that it's not just me having started this, it's that the community has now um, started committing to it. Charlotte and Ian are maintaining it. Um, we're seeing more and more people getting pulled into it. Uh, one college class in Florida used it as a final, uh, a final exam uh, to, uh, to demonstrate basic information security and test people on their understanding of what hash passwords mean. So we're seeing this kind of turn into more and more of a community project. That's without a doubt the thing I'm most proud of. Over the course of Charlotte talking with you today, I'm going to take some questions. You can throw them up here in the in the uh, the chat that Ian has set up for you or in the YouTube live. You can also tweet me at Tara if I miss something and I'm more than happy to ask questions or ask Charlotte to clarify things as we go forward. Other than that, Ian and Charlotte are just incredible human beings. It's just a joy to be associated with them. And I can't wait for you to not only commit a password and crack a hash, but also become involved in the project as well. Uh, let's make this easy and fun for people who have never tried to do anything like this in public before. And Charlotte, now now is going to show you how easy it is to crack a hash with the nerd list. Okay, Excellent. so wonderful. Um, I'll actually start by introducing a, a few of the tools I'll be using and starting with what my introduction to nerd list was. Uh, so up here, I just have the GitHub for nerd list. And I heard about this when Tara spoke at Wild West Hacking Fest last year. I to just just coming up on two years ago or something um and put out the prizes of the silver scrabble tiles for cracking a hash in public and i was like i was i was just getting into security stuff and saw this as like tara was saying a really good way to lower the bar in a way that gets rid of gatekeeping and still gives a really good actually useful project that you can contribute to and that you don't feel like you're going to be like really embarrassed about your commit to it or shamed for it or just there's no gatekeeping around it and um then i'll be going through the installation of john the ripper which is a relatively simple to install and use uh password cracking utility which as tara was saying it lets you disassemble the omelette and get the the egg back in the shell um it's i'll be then cracking a hash from hashes.org which is currently down but i have grabbed their list of hashes they have a backup of the site 
but they maintain loads of lists of just millions of hashes all anonymized so they are hashes that have been used by people but there's no usernames you're not breaking into someone's account um so i guess with that i'll just get started so this is just a completely clean linux install you you could do it from desktop environment but it's a little bit easier for me to stream it working from this um I have already grabbed, this is just MD5 hashes from the hashes.org. So those are relatively simple to crack hashes. It shouldn't take too long to get some results. Um, we'll need it to grab. Michelle, if you could maybe make that uh, that text a little larger, it might be easier to see for the, uh, the audience there. That's a bit better? A little bit, yeah, perfect. Thank you. OK. Um, Apologies if any of these installs take a while. Um, I'll also be keeping an eye on chat, so I can try to keep an eye out for any questions. Um, let's have a nerd listing directory. And let's start with grabbing nerd list. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I am very tired and very stressed, so apologies for any any mistakes or me just not knowing how anything works. Did not pull. It's just one moment. It's a clone because I do not already have the repo. Apologies for that. <laughs> we'll grab I'm doing it live. That's the fun of doing it live. <laughs> Everyone gets to see that this is uh, to what Tara said as well. And pull Tara in yeah. here as well. You know, you get to do it live, and and this is what people experience. So they're getting the live experience of this people who have done it many, many times. Yeah. You know, it's okay. It's not just okay; it's expected. Yeah. This is something that we do because it's fun, but that doesn't mean it's not frustrating. We'll all miss stuff. I know I can't. I can't type a password to save my life if somebody's watching me. So yeah, <laughs> no. But and then you forget everybody's looking at you, and it just becomes fun. <laughs> so we we now have the nerd list. We can. Um, we can look at it, it's just got a bunch of passwords. They're the kinds of things you'd expect, like Tara said. But if we go back out, we can also grab this is the part that'll take a moment and I'll I'll briefly talk about my experience with winning the tile once or one of the tiles once I get this installing. John, even though they ship just like pre built apps that you can just grab and run, they're I've never had any luck with them. Instead, you have to grab, I cannot remember what they call it, Bleeding Jumbo. Do they have a link to it on their main page? No. Um, you have to grab the source and build it from source, which is, in my opinion, actually the, the most intimidating part of all this. You might think that like uh, cracking a password is difficult or, or intimidating or something that's takes leap skills or something like that but it's i found it scarily easy like the fact that anyone could just pick this up and be mm -hmm. cracking passwords relatively efficiently with it is it's and you're not using you're not using an aws box you're not using like an ec2 instance or something like that or like uh something with crazy processing power you're just using a, a machine you've got at home with some bare metal yeah. right Yep, this yeah. is just, it's a server from about 2012 that I have at home that it cost me less than my laptop cost to get set up. It's significantly more powerful than my laptop, but when you're talking cracking hashes, it's probably only five, six times more powerful than my laptop. So you could run this on just about anything. I've been tempted to try running it on my phone just to get some benchmarks. 
I'd actually be super interested in seeing that. Yeah, because um, Tmux lets you run all this on your phone, and you can just grab Linux packages. So I am genuinely tempted to do that. Uh, so so, I'm I'm going to play the role of home user for a second. You're doing Git, you're doing these pieces, but what exactly is it that you're doing? Are you pulling down the password lists? Are you building the password hasher? Explain exactly what you're doing. So before before I printed out all of this, I was grabbing the password list, and there's there's a few other things in the nerdless repo. There's some utilities for. Um, sorting the list and doing some hashing on it to make some types of cracking or um, fuzzing easier. There's uh, STLs of the Scrabble tiles if you wanted to replicate your own in some way, whether that's 3D printing or going to a CNC shop and getting, or with your own CNC and getting tiles cut. There's um, patterns for working with Android lock screen patterns and a bunch of other mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'll today only be using the nerdless.txt file, which is- Gotcha, so you're, password. you're pulling down the password list. Yep. And then I also grabbed from GitHub the password cracking software, which in this case has, again, some other stuff that I won't be using, but it has the source code which we will then have to build to make the cracking software. As I was saying, they they ship uh, so-called binaries, just pre-built apps of it that should work on the system that they are labeled for. I've never had any luck with those. They're never up to date. Um, that is another good way to get started in contributing. You can just build for a generic system and send in a release. So if once you're comfortable with NerdList, you could start contributing to John to keep it up to date and bugs fixed. And that I think would be a a big but a, a doable step. Um, so I've I've grabbed John, downloaded it, um, cloned it from the GitHub, and then I've gone into the source directory and I'll be pulling up the documentation here just to make sure that I'm doing things correct. I'd also love if folks want to take a look at just the raw list, uh, you can take a look yeah. at the raw list. I've posted it in the YouTube chat okay. uh, and you can also see it uh, here. If Ian wants to throw it up on screen too, you can actually look at it. And as Charlotte's doing this, I can tell you some of the stories that that arose from some of these passwords. They're funny as hell. <laughs> All right. Let me know, uh, Charlotte, let me know when you want to jump back in here again. I know you're, you're pacing stuff in over there, but for yep. folks who've never uh, done who've never looked at, at this kind of a list before. It's just a raw list. You can see it here. Um, the funniest stuff I've seen in here, there's Chuck Norris. That one cracks me up. Um, the the level of passwords that are in here, uh, we got Joshua from War Games, Falcon. Um, Guest is a classic one. There's Zion 10101 from uh, 101, 101 from, uh, I can't even say it anymore, from Matrix. I am your father. My voice is my passport. Verify me. These are just classic nerd touchstones, right? They're the classic stuff that we talk about and joke about, and they've appeared in password form. And one of the things Charlotte probably hasn't told you yet is that Charlotte is the person who uh, created a fuzzy version of the nerd list so that any of these classic passwords can be fuzzed to leet speak. For instance, subbing in letters, numbers, uh, and it turns out that that's a damn fine way to crack some hashes. Mm -hmm. You've gotten a lot that way, actually. It's not that people yeah. use Joshua, it's that they use J0SH ampersand, right? So yeah. it's, it's so great, yeah. Um, so you'll notice that some of the passwords have that already done in the list by people added them, whether it's removing um, white space and having both versions in, or um, a bunch of variations on numbers on the end of windows, which you might not be able to see this here. Um, or there's uh, substitutions of an A for an at and stuff like that in the list. But John has, and you'll, you'll see this in a minute, what are called rules for your word list, which you can either set custom rules and say, hey, every time you see an O, check with an O, check with a zero, check with some random weird, if you think it might support Unicode character. Um, I, uh, um, step completed. Um, I used 
the simplest rule set that John has built in when I um, first attempted to crack passwords with the nerd list. And the, uh, the most interesting password that I found, which is the one that ended up being tweeted about by the nerd list account and that I was most proud of, was a fuzz from Swordfish where I believe just the O had been changed to a zero. Wait, so the, the list didn't have that. So great. <laughs> so without using that rule, I wouldn't have got that, that password cracked, but because of that, I was able to. And then the, there were some which I got, which were just a bunch of random numbers in, in a row, which I think was the rule doing unexpected things, but it, it worked. <laughs> You can continue, Tara, if you had more to say. Oh, I, you know, I, I've always got more to say. I, I mostly just love the stories that happen with the, uh, um, with the, the kinds of things people committed. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cuss words in here, and I was going to, I was going to like purge the profanity, but I was like, that all we ever do is swear at things. Like I think half of my passwords are swearing at something. Like screw this site, it's terrible. I hate everything about it. Story password manager. You know, it's, it's, it's true, right? That's what we do. And so I was looking to capture like actual behavior, not just, yep. um, you know, not not just kind of like the not profane version. So this is a PG-13 list, but the tail call of Cthulhu was really funny. The Tannhauser gate one was super meaningful. We're all just sitting here going like, oh, tears in the rain. And this was open. Yeah, it's really great stuff. <laughs> I loved when somebody jumped in. Um, it was a gentleman, um, I think his name was Robert, and the history's in the repo who committed um, classic Android unlock codes, the physical unlock codes, yep. like um, up to the uh, to the left and down again, um, X's, um, L in any direction, because it turns out people will try to swipe, they'll try to do familiar gestures with their password unlock. And so it's not just that you've got uh, uh, words, it's also that people will do very predictable things like draw a swirl, they'll draw like what they think of as a Fibonacci sequence on their, their Android phones, so great. I, yeah, I looked at it and I keep meaning to add what I used as a swipe pattern when I was still using the swipe patterns on my phone because I, I've met so many people that use the same thing, just doing a zigzag across every single dot. Um, so, so right what just now, what just finished here? They were uh, you did a bunch of stuff and then yeah. it came to a stop. So it's been it was configuring the um John. So it was working out what my system has installed. All this is automated. You just tell it, hey, configure and then build. Um it looked at my system, it's currently showing that I have a 64-bit Intel CPU, I'm running Linux, and then a bunch of other things that I have or don't have. And then it just finished um, making the app. So it is now built and it should be able to be run. I'm not and I'll note too, John is, John is available just stock on Kali Linux or as a, as yeah. a package. Charlotte is yep. doing kind of a bigger, more custom download of it right now, but you could just, it, it comes pre-installed yeah. on Kali, so. If you grab Kali, you get a very slightly out of date, like negligibly out of date version of John. And you also get um, a utility which kind of hooks into John that's called Johnny, which gives you a GUI for it, a graphical interface, which can make it a little easier to approach, though I personally haven't liked the graphical interface because it's relatively poorly designed and doesn't follow smoothly. Whereas, I would personally rather look into well-written documentation for something that's a bit less user-friendly than something with no documentation that's trying to be more user-friendly. But both are available as options just from an install of um, Kali Linux. Um, okay, so it should be in run, which they provide a nice test program. So if you run John, with uh, dash dash test equals zero. Uh, this is in their install documentation, which is just on their GitHub. Um, it should tell what you whether, do? what does the test do? Yeah, what does it do? The is test, it, yeah. it runs a bunch of known uh, um, hashes and algorithms with known results, and it checks that the results that you get are correct. So. 
even though you should get an error during the build and it should fail if anything has gone wrong, it's always good to then have a, ch a test to make sure that, say, if they've pushed an update, they've not put buggy but building code in. Or if you have some weird versions of what we were showing before as installed or not installed, that all of those play nicely with it while it's running. So I'm not going to let this test go all the way through. It takes a while, but it it just says pass on the end of every one. It hasn't failed a single test. So I have no reason to believe that it, it would have failed. Um, I'm going to actually move the... Uh, nerd list file into here. So this command is saying grab the the password list and move it to the current directory. That just makes my life a little bit easier for the moment. You're just moving the the password list you downloaded yep. from nerd list. It's just and it's just a plain text file, and you're just moving that over into the current directory to yep. make the command you're going to type shorter. Uh, yep. Legit. We're engineers. We're lazy. <laughs> and then I will also. Finally, get around to grabbing the hash list, and you, I'll, I'll pull it up, open it up, and show what the hashes look like, what these lists look like. Oh, it's a seven zip. Okay, this is actually probably the worst part of this: the fact that the seven zip package starts with a P. Throws me off every single time I go to install seven zip. It's the tenological of zip packages. Did you remember that without Googling it? <laughs> I only remember that without Googling it because I did it yesterday. I have I've never remembered that before. Just like if I've needed 7-zip, it always takes a Google because you would think it would start with maybe zip or 7-zip or lib7-zip or something like that. But it begins with a P for who knows why. Maybe? <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, it's per seven zip. It's fine. Per, per seven. Per seven. Yep, yep, yep. Per seven. So, I guess it's an X. I should really just use the help. <laughs> this is great. I love it. No, I, I kind of have to go to see if you can get all the way through it without Googling it. Tar X P Z F. Hmm. Tar C Z B. You know, for I, I remember Tar. <laughs> Because it's um, <laughs> extract and then Z like you're doing a bad German accent and then a file. So XZF is extract the file. <laughs> we are going to need the files. <laughs> so here I'm just, I'm getting the MD5 hashes. So these were downloaded from ashes.org before mm -hmm. their database was corrupt. Um, Where did those hashes come from? Uh, one of the things I want to be clear with people as we're talking about this and I'm posting it live is I'm saying we want you to crack hashes. We want you to do it legally. Yes. So where did these come from and how do you know it's OK and that it's legal and that it's fine for you to run John the Ripper and the nerd list on these? Hashes org get anyone can submit hashes, but they all have to be anonymized. There are no usernames. There are no emails. There is nothing associated with them. They are just lists of hashes. So these would not give you access to an account. They just, when you're done cracking the hashes, you have a hash and the plain text. So this, it could be a password. It could be anything that was hashed. Um, they have, um, Anyone can submit anything. Uh, often you'll just get people putting dumps of sha ones or whatever. But they also have a leaks section, which has known large leaks, often things which were um, mm -hmm. grabbed by Troy Hunt of Have I Been Pwned first. And then they get just the anonymized stuff. So these are all only hashes, even though it is from a leak and you might know they were passwords, you have no way of associating them with accounts without okay. somehow having that full thing. The list I have grabbed is from... By the way, this is temp.hashes.org, folks. Hashes.org is down for a moment with a, a domain yep. issue, but temp and uh, Ian can probably throw that up for you too here, and I'll try and post yeah. it in the chat. I cannot... Yeah, so if you go to cracking, because part of hashes.org... Um, Part of their whole idea is to do, I wouldn't call it distributed compute for hacking of, um, cracking of hashes, hashes, but they 
as you crack things, you can submit your um, found planes and they associate them with the lists and say, hey, 77% of these, these hashes have been cracked. And over here you have your left lists, which are just hashes that exist on this site where the plain text is not known yet. Mm -hmm. And that's what I grabbed. I grabbed presumably the same as this version from before they went down, the mm -hmm. MD5, because they are among the easiest to crack, and it's a really big list. Um, the bigger a list of hashes you have, the more efficient the cracking is in John. That's specific to the algorithms John use. Most other utilities, that's the same, but if you were just brute forcing... Um, with like a really um, simple approach of look at one hash and guess until you get it right, then there wouldn't be a gain in efficiency from a really big list. But I grabbed this link, it's quick and it's big, so it, it should be a relatively good place to start. I'm excited, I'm so excited. <laughs> These are what the hashes look like. It's a very big list. It's probably scrolling by way too quick to read. It's not going to let me kill it, is it? <laughs> Control C. Control C. There. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> wow, um, please stop. So <laughs> these, are, these are actually salted MD5 hashes. Um, they, they have this marker dollar sign one dollar sign, which is an indicator that it's an MD5 hash. And then you just have a bunch of what will look like largely random characters. Um, and for, for a question for either of you to answer, for the audience, can you describe what you mean by salted? What does that mean when we salt something? I think Tara had a really, really good explanation of that, going back to the omelet analogy. You got it. I'll, I'll let you I'll let you control C in the background on that one. <laughs> Open it down! Gets the directory in the front. Uh, so salting a password has to do with, um, uh, I, I actually, I was talking to these folks earlier about what I was going to say, so now I don't remember I said it on the broadcast or not. Um, but what we do when we salt a password is we add a bit of extra nonsense to it that is situation dependent. So the the idea of taking a password like uh, ABC123, which is gonna be easily crackable, and then adding an additional piece of information, hopefully you've got a better password than that, adding an additional piece of information to it and then using your hash algorithm to mix all that up together and then spit out a hashed password plus salt at the end lets you um it, it lets you as a system administrator really the function of it as a systems administrator is if you've got terrible eight character password requirements you're in you know a situation where you don't you can't store things plain text you, you never would want to ever do that again um, it became a way for systems administrators uh, like actually like me back in the day, a decade ago, to add a little bit of something onto passwords before we stored it in our MySQL databases. <laughs> and often that salt might be the time and date stamp of the password being created. It might be uh, a random mix of the user's uh, first name and the geographic location of the IP address that they were at. Often because that's an easy thing to grab from someone creating an account and creating a password. So the reason you do that is because it is way, way, way harder to crack a hash that is ABC123 plus a 10-digit time and date stamp and an IP address that that person was coming, was coming from, or maybe an IP address that was transformed by some, you know, some random multiplier by pi. Because a computer going backward with a random multiplier of pi on an IP address, the time and date stamp of when the account was created and then the original password, a computer can do that instantly. I mean, not instantly, it's some microseconds, right? But the the nature of a computer doing that means that you could take a really insecure password and do better with it as you're storing it, not in plain text. That's the reasoning behind it. And once you know or have a feeling about what assault might be, you can turn that into an algorithm instead of brute force guessing. If you know that the salts are time and date stamps, there's a limited number of time and date stamps out there. So it's still gonna be problematic to brute force, but at least you have a place to start. So um, if you're doing this, imagine that you made an omelet with both duck and chicken eggs. And just as I was giving an example earlier, imagine that you could go back in time and you'd have to know which protein belonged to a duck and which protein belonged to a chicken. I clearly did not have enough food this morning for breakfast <laughs> because I'm sitting here just imagining like a great, like a Mexican omelet right now. Okay. Uh, but the, the, the way you go back in time is to know how those things were created. 
and then split them apart when you understand what the, the SALT uh, algorithm was. You might just know, frankly, nothing more than the number of digits that was the SALT, maybe eight at the end that's an appended SALT. All of a sudden, it starts to get a little bit easier to figure out what those passwords were. This is, this is original two-factor authentication. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. So, no, yeah, no, that's great. So, yeah, because yep. we got a lot of people, especially students and, and whatnot that are tuning in that uh, they might not know. They might not know why that's important that that list is the way it is that you're pulling down. So please, Charlotte, continue. Um, I'm going to pull up the best document that exists for using John, and that is this PDF, which uh, I don't have the YouTube open. So if that could get linked. Yep. This cheat sheet has about everything you'll need and some stuff which is not in the John documentation, which is very useful because you, you'll find it elsewhere, but you won't find it where you would expect to be looking for information about how to use John. So I just moved the, the um, list of the salted hashes to the um, same place as I moved the password list and where the the John utility is. And then I'll be referencing this. So if you if you want to use a word list, it's if I zoom in, dash dash word list and your list. So in this case it'll be dash dash word list is nerd list.txt. And that's in this <laughs> what? Sorry. I said I'm so proud. I just I love this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and right. then yeah. and then you have your hash file, which it will autocomplete. It doesn't autocomplete the word list. And it'll take it'll take a guess at what kind of hashes you have and then start doing things. I'm not going to use any rules at first. So here it is, I believe, trying to load in the entire um hash list and the word list at the same time. Um, I should really, uh, if I, I can pull up my monitoring. Oh. And this is where the computational power that you have on the machine actually starts to count a little bit. Yeah. So, cause it just takes a little while yeah, for people not to doing anything at the happen. moment. Yeah. Um, so currently it's just, it's loading in the, um, hash list this could take a moment so i guess this is where i'll talk about the winning of the title as i yeah. said yeah. i would talk about a couple of times um so i i heard about the project and i thought it would be a, a really good place to get started contributing as that's what it was for mm -hmm. so i um i added a couple of passwords i cannot remember what i added i believe there were references from Doctor oh, Who or something. There were a couple of Doctor Who references and I believe I added a couple. I'm gonna go back and look and see what your commits were. Is that, okay. I can look right here at the pull request. You're an admin on this, you can see it too. Um, so I, I committed a couple passwords and I, I believe I emailed Tara saying that I would likely um, poke into cracking some things that I had access to, or possibly using the word list for a different technique, fuzzing, which uses um, word lists often as well, where instead of trying to crack a hash, um, what's called offline, so you're not actually touching the thing that the password came from, instead you just try to enter passwords to the thing, which wasn't something anyone who had previously got a tile had done. I wanted to do something different. <laughs> and Tara also did replied, funny stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Tara replied and basically said, just just do it. Do what whatever <laughs> you want. I want to make sure you contribute and that you actually get into this stuff, which that kick in the ass was exactly what I needed at that point. <laughs> I, I'm so glad. And I'm glad. So I actually have pasted in here in the in our chat a um, one just one of the commits that Charlotte had done, um, and this one is from the IT crowd, and uh, yep. uh, it was Lonely Road. So, um, and one other thing I want to note: if you folks get a chance to look at this this uh, this PR, there's an authors.txt file for the nerd list, and I want you to add yourself to it if you commit a password. 
to the um, as a pull request. So, because I want you to not only I want your your name to be on the authors.txt um, list. This is this is the kind of stuff that gets you started, and it's the kind of stuff that matters when you're uh, when you're creating a history for yourself when you're learning as a student. So yeah, um, and it, this is funny. This is funny as hell. Lonely Road on IT uh, crowd. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, did you, didn't you and, and Charlie Simon's problem, and I was like, did you try turning it off and turning it back on again? <laughs> it just gets funnier. Yeah, uh, reading through the, the um, pull requests as a maintainer on it has been great. Like some of the references that people either have spent time looking up, which is amusing to think about, or the fact that they might just know them off the top of their head, or know people who use those as passwords, is A, a little terrifying, and B, hilarious. Like, <laughs> scrolling through the list and just, like, I've I've run into, I've occasionally just, like, left it running overnight, cracking passwords. Another example of it, um, the list including, like, pre- um, mangled passwords but i've run into i can't remember where where they are i run ran into a bunch of these when leaving it overnight um mm. sequential was, passwords yeah sequential passwords a lot of um mm -hmm. a lot of this crash there, override my secure password a, a lot of the the profane ones in relation to companies as well oh and, yeah I saw like a surprising amount. Which... Nuclear launch codes from War Great War Games was a classic. Jeff McJunkin uh, committed that one. That was pretty great. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's <laughs> secret injection. <laughs> then I, I think you you tweeted about or it was in your talk where you were like, "Is this password something from like Call of Cthulhu or is it a sequel yeah. injection? We may never know." I, we, I, know, I couldn't tell. Like, There's too many apostrophes in here. It's Yonso thoughts. Yeah. We're at the mount at the mountains of madness. Yeah, <laughs> and there's a couple other ones in there too. That's like sequel injection or Lovecraft. <laughs> oh, people oh, need no. to try Lovecraft Country. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Is this going yet? Is it, was it, it's doing thinking. Um, so it's it's being a little slow right now. I guess I grabbed too large of a list. Uh, this is running on. Actually, I don't even think it's running on a hard drive. I think it's running off of my NAS. So it's like yeah. trying to read in all the hashes. And if you don't specify a hash type, which I guess I'll kill it and specify a hash type. Um, It'll make it quicker. There's, yeah, it won't try to look at every hash and work out, hey, this yeah. this thinks this one's MD5 crypt, but this one looks like MD5 crypt long, or this one looks like it could mm -hmm. also be Pix MD5. It's checking either all of the hashes or like some random selection of this very large hash list and trying to work out what they are. So I'm going to tell it that, hey, the format equals MD5 crypt. Mm hmm and I'll feed it the list again. And now only it's just 500 think. megabytes of text. Text. Yeah, I, I know it's only 500 megabytes of text, but it's it's having it's looking at it line by line. It's running relatively inefficiently, and it's running over like a very slow hard drive on a NAS. So I've given it just about the worst case scenario of running quickly on the um, hash list intake. Any chance we could try a, um, a a more curated version of this, like a, a way teenier version, and just run the nerd list against it so people can see what's happening with uh, it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a different tab. If it's not gonna, it shouldn't take too many resources I, here. Different session. Yeah, I, I can pull up another session. Um, yeah. I could grab. Are any of these smaller? The the WordPress one is also always always a good time. Oh yeah. Um, I how their CDN works, it doesn't give you a nice URL to download from, so I can't download it straight onto here. Um, and if they, if it's able to get it, if it's smaller and can run on bare metal, it should be faster, hopefully. And I mean, like, you know what you're doing. Yeah. But. yeah. Hoping the MD5 one would be small enough. Hopefully this gives me another session. I think what we've learned here is that hope is a large part of being a, an engineer, as well as laziness. Sure. And when it when it comes Bad to jokes. especially so proper sacrifices to the live yeah. demo gods. 
Yeah. Well, we've stuff. already summoned oh. Cthulhu. Didn't you see that? <laughs> that was the problem. That was the problem. <laughs> and that was when they knew it had all gone wrong. <laughs> so sorry, Charlie. You were saying, Charlie? Uh, it's, of course, session aborted. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's purely statistical with hash cracking as well. So even even on top of the hope of like the demo working right and having made the correct sacrifices to the demo gods of, of your choice, then you could still end up with it all being statistical, with it taking literally forever for something to crack, even if you do end up cracking it. Granted, mm -hmm. that's exceptionally unlikely. It'll probably take a few minutes. Um, I can't open up a second session in Chrome, so I will first. So great. you learn more watching other people do stuff. Yeah. Um, I've been sharing screen. One of the one of the, one cool thing you can do, by the way, folks, is you can use Zoom or whatever and um, share and give remote control to somebody and be pair pair programming remotely. I've learned a lot just watching other people do stuff. And if I like shared a VM with them and gone, can you just show me what you're talking about right now? And yep. you learn so much watching other people do things. My fabulous husband, uh, Deviant Olaf, has brought me eggs. Fancy tiny <laughs> eggs now with it's, an, an egg and an egg in a basket or something. So I'm just gonna dip him in like now he's a little he's see, it's a salted egg. He was being funny. Yeah. I am currently what I deal with people. over a smaller <laughs> a smaller list and it's the WordPress list. So these are also, I think, when I last did this, they were slightly more likely to be things from Nerdlist. Mm -hmm. um, so I should now be able to unzip. I believe it's called WordPress. Nope, it's called Left WordPress because it's the left hashes. Got the decompressed yeah. bag. Egg cup. This makes me oh. so happy. He brought me sparkly water in a champagne glass. Oh. I swear it's oh. water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, best husband. Okay, so while we're also looking at that as uh, Charlotte's getting this going, so I want to uh, tell folks, again, to be clear, these are solid sterling silver uh, Scrabble tiles that come from the joke from um, uh, Sneakers. The, the originally the, These were originally the SeaTech Astronomy tiles. I had them all cast in silver and... I can just show you what they what they look like here. Um, so these are the SeaTech Astronomy. That's that's my screen. That's awesome. SeaTech uh, Astronomy tiles. And if you crack a hash and send me proof, and you'll see flags committed as PNGs yep. on Nerdlist. And now Charlotte and Ian can also approve it. Uh, we will. I will send you. I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine remaining solid silver. Uh, uh, Scrabble tiles, and if you've never made a commit to anything ever before on GitLab, uh, on GitHub, if you've never committed publicly to an InfoSec project, and it's like it's been kind of nerve wracking for you, um, give it a shot. Do it. Um, send the information to B Size Orlando and Ian over here, or to me on Twitter, or to Charlotte, or just you know reply to the Nerd List. Nerd at Nerd Listing is the Twitter account, and Ian and Charlotte are now on that too. Um, and I'm going to send you a um, some Scrabble stickers because Scrabble stickers are cool. So um, I, I pulled up my commit where I submitted a flag and I, all I added was this, this PNG with mm -hmm. its name dash flag dot PNG that's specified somewhere in there, but it also doesn't matter a huge amount. It just makes it look nicer. And these were what I got from, um, I can't remember which, um, which hash list I was using. I was using just a subset of it. It was only about 4,000 passwords. And mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five. Um, this one, I think, was just weird mangling, but Swordfish is the one that's mm -hmm. not just password or something sequential. Though mm -hmm. in the list, as I was saying before, it doesn't have this substitution. Um, so great. It, it sounds like the fans on my server are ramping up. So this is doing something now. Perfect. Yeah. Um, while, while, while you're doing that, I have to pull up these two comments because I, I can't help. But uh, as we're talking <laughs> about our egg cups, and, uh, and then, uh, and then, Excellent. is it, is it, is it, 
yeah, a hash, a hash is hatch, hatching. <laughs> so, right now, this is just sitting, chugging through stuff, and like I was saying, it's it's statistical. This could take a while. This could be nearly instant when it finds something. I, I've normally found it takes a minute or so before the first stuff with these lists and using nerd list. Um, you can see there's eight hundred or eight million hashes in this list. So that's relatively big, nearly nine million. Um slightly fewer different salts. So these salts are not unique. Um but there is a relatively large distribution of them. Um that'll make it a bit slower. None of the lists that hashes org have up are unsalted, I believe, though they do have these much, much, much larger lists where they are not divided by hash type, but instead they're just divided by their length. So these 32 hex ones could be, I believe MD5 is 32 characters in hex, um, but they could be anything else. So I, I haven't tried working with those. Um, <laughs> My husband's getting on this. <laughs> <laughs> Four egg puns. <laughs> oh, yeah, I gotta Four put that on this. Okay. <laughs> um, who knows how long this will take? Well, let's talk about too, because th this is something that uh, Tara's made really great points, and both of you made really great points about how this is something that you can start with and play with, not only for GitHub but password hashing, etc. And I think something that's also worth mentioning is. This is really good for many intro CTFs when you're going out and you're trying new capture the flags to learn skills. Many of the first crypto challenges you will encounter is some some password cracking where they'll give you a list. Yep. And often it's the sans, you know, password cracking list that you use against it or, or something to that effect. But you'll you'll get those pieces. So this is one of the like key first tools that you use in some of those crypto challenges. So I, I think this is excellent. Yeah. So when I've I've only taken part in a couple of CTFs, um, one of them I only had my phone with me, and this is this was shortly after I um, cracked hashes in the wild to get the the Scrabble tile with Nerd List, but I knew I wouldn't be able to just like crank hashes on my phone there and I didn't have anything set up so I didn't have like remote access to any of my computers through my phone and I will just as a as a CTF hint before you try cracking any hashes google them Oh yeah <laughs> sure absolutely I got this challenge by googling it while other people were sitting there trying to crack this hash on their laptops and I already had the answer because it had been it was a hash that was a reference to some nerdy movie where there was a it was a full phrase hashed, not just a single word. So you're not gonna get it with a word list. It it would be an incredibly secure password. But someone else had used it for a CTF elsewhere and someone had posted it in their write up. So Google things before you try cracking them. <laughs> This is really great. I do, I do love the. I didn't realize this was going to become an in an egg to, to hash, you know, cracking pun talk, but <laughs> I love it. Just love say it. it. This it's breakfast foods. It's yeah, it's extraordinary. Good hacking analysis. Or is it extraordinary? Extraordinary. Okay, there we are. So I'm no, I'm not going to stop. I'm not. It's. I'm not sure if my lovely husband married me because of or in spite of my punning, but I'm, I'm <laughs> on my way, and he has to learn to live with it. So. So if, <laughs> it's pretty great. Th this isn't getting anywhere at the moment. So I'll I'll add the the last flag that I tend to use, which is what mm -hmm. I was referencing earlier: the rules, the rule sets, mm -hmm. the mangling to these word lists. Um, there is some description of some of these in the actual documentation, but not all of them. Um, Single will do single character replacements. So it'll do uh, an O to a zero. It'll do an I to a one or the other way around and stuff like that. And it can do that multiple times, but it won't add anything onto the end of your password. So if you just have password in your word list, but password one is actually the password, you won't get that with this rule. Word list adds more of that kind of addition stuff. 
uh, extra adds that and will like reverse the string and things like that. So you'd get password or whatever password is backwards. Um, Jumbo does every single rule from all of those. And that's the one I, I tend to use. And I'll just copy it because I don't trust myself to type. And then this will have many more options from that word list. So applying this rule takes the nerd list from being, what is it, a few hundred lines? Can't remember how many lines it is. Yeah, it's just over 300 lines. And it makes it tens of thousands of lines with all these possible different options where you've done substitutions, you've added things, you've reversed orders of... Um, Whole thinking? strings, parts of strings, stuff like that. Is it thinking? Is it doing stuff? Yep. Um, it is now running. It's running mm -hmm. on 32 cores. It it should find something in, in a moment. If we're, okay. if we're running over time, I can let this run and can tweet what it finds. But it will, mm -hmm. as far as I can say, will with definity in something that's purely statistical, it will find something. I'm sure it'll go for at least a couple minutes. In the meantime, um, just it looks like basically the steps to making this work, depending upon the amount of computational power you have, you can literally just run, um, you can grab any of these uh, um, hashes, mb 5 hashes from temp.hashes.org, Yep. Um, download them onto a machine. If you've got, you know, a Kali VM, that would probably work just mm. fine. There is there is a John install that comes uh, standard on, it, it comes included in, in Kali right now. And yeah, it's yep. a little tiny bit out of date, but it's not going to matter yeah, that much. It doesn't you can do matter. literally nothing other than download one packet, uh, one, one uh, um, package of those hashes from temp.hashes.org, run John on it with, with nothing. And eventually, I mean, you're pretty much probably going to get something even yep. on um, just a regular old collie box. So I think we're going to, yep. this, the suspense is killing me, it, even though there's not really suspense, right? So, like this yeah. is, this is WordPress hashes. Somebody's going to have something in here. Yeah. Right. So I was in a CTF yesterday. What was I doing? I was doing uh sans net wars core and um, I've uh, I'm in the castle defense portion of the, of that CTF now and just kind of like solidly middle of the pack on that one. And, you know, I thought I knew how to secure WordPress. And my WordPress gets owned all the time. <laughs> it just gets owned and owned and owned. It's great, right? So, uh, and th these are, you know, older installs of WordPress. Come to think of it, I should probably just try like updating WordPress. But it's yeah. a, it's a little, it's a little, um, it's not, it's not bridged to the internet. The, 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 yeah. the LAN is not bridged to the internet. So you can't pull, you have to, you have to have everything ready to go. Anyway, so um, the, uh, yeah, I thought yesterday that I could secure even ancient WordPress. And I'm here to tell you, you can disable every plugin. You can kill the HD access file. You can change all of the DB passwords. You can hide the WP config, the, the conf file, and then symbolically link to it. So you think nobody else can find it. It doesn't matter. Somebody's going to own the hell out of your WordPress. It just keeps happening. I my blog was briefly on WordPress and before it got owned I managed to break it myself trying to update it and for for about a year my blog would just return the generic WordPress database error and that was it that was my entire blog <laughs> now I kind of want to do that like make custom WordPress errors and then just have that be that that's the page that's the page <laughs> Fantastic. Fans on my server are starting to wind up. My room is beginning to heat up. This is actually this is actually how I heat my room in the winter. <laughs> I have right in front of me there's an entire wall of windows which are in a house that was built in the very late 1800s and these windows were put in about 60 years ago. So they are very leaky and it gets very cold in the winter. I've had it be like negative 10 in here at points. So I just run both of my computers cracking hashes from hashes org or from other leaks totally legally. Um, and they just, both my computers will just sit here spinning their fans up and heating my room. Like, and I get, I get results using nerd list as well, relatively often, because it's just so amusing to see nerd culture references as mm -hmm. passwords, which I'm sure many of these are in other large words, just word lists for cracking this stuff 
not all of them are. I know that a number or possibly the majority of them aren't in um, either Rock Queue or Have I Been Pwned, which are probably the two mm -hmm. biggest commonly used word lists. Um, but it's, it's still like it works really well for only having 300 because of how targeted it, targeted it is. I wish, I wish we'd got results by now. <laughs> Oh no, it's fine. It's super, super fine. The uh, this is the nature of doing this, right? Like we can we can know no matter what that this is going to return results, and it just takes a, a moment to do it. But yeah. at the same time, um, you know, I, I would actually um, there's there's probably a solution out there where um, you could um, we can we can figure this part out. But there's probably a solution out there where no matter if we get something immediately right now with one or two answers, it might be kind of nice to uh to just let the stream run to let to like let people watch what's happening over time yeah so there's um, some there's some options there um, I and i'll could, let you know, i always do that i could start my own local recording throw it on youtube and let ian grab it starting like now and going until there's either i run out of recording space or it finishes the list is there a way to see the progress? Is there, I think one of the things I'm kind of wondering about, and there's, it's too late to do it now in like a verbose yeah. mode, but is there any way to see the progress of what's happening? I believe you can have it show where it, um, for each attempt that it tries, but going across 32 threads, that just scrolls mm -hmm. by too quick to actually keep to track anything. of anything. Um, and it doesn't do like a percentage meter. No, because like it, okay. it has no clue when it'll be done. Hmm. Um. If it's just using a word list, I guess it has some idea, but with these being salted, it's having to either brute force or statistically work out what the salts likely are. Mm -hmm. So even if you had some sort of upper bound on how long it could take from the length of your hash list and the length of your word list, then you still don't have a, a solid bound on the, the attempts at different salts. Hmm. All right. It's a fascinating topic. Status. Now, oh, oh, is it doing things to do the thing? It does have a status. Okay. So I guess that percentage is based on. Hit any key for status. Oh, who yeah. knows? Who knows what, what the percentage is based on? Um, but you can see there on the right, it's. Oh, it's um, finding things. No, so that's status still. So it's yeah. doing this many attempts per second. I, oh, okay. I'm not entirely sure on the lowercase c versus uppercase. Don't that, you. That's something <laughs> I would have to check. And then it's checking this section of the um of the word list, I believe. If I look really for Yeah, so it's doing this first section or no, it would be the first hundred and four lines of the word list right now. Why hundred and four? I don't know how it likes that. It could be a, a memory limitation or um, could be just it working out what's most efficient because right now it's running on 90% of 32 cores, which is pretty oh, good. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Does John include the capacity to do multi-threaded this way or did you need to specify yeah. it? Um, by default, it will include OpenMP and another form of multi-threading so if you if you don't tell it anything about how many cores you want it to run on it will do open mp across all of the cores that your machine has oh it just found oh. a password there we go quirt which <laughs> presumably qwerty with a mangling rule applied or if I go can you find it there. in the password list and which one it yeah uh, it will be from uh oh so that should have had shots lined up so it's shots. Uh, I got an egg shot. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Clink. <laughs> it's come from one of these three with a mangling rule, which attempts by removing characters off the end sequentially. Um, wonderful. Let's go back and could you ex make that a little bigger uh, so okay. everyone can see? Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. let's go down there. Perfect. So uh, wonderful. So so if I show this now, it. It has a reading here for the G per second. Holy cow! What 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 do we have going on here? Um, we got ten, ten hashes cracked. Who's Spike? 
All right, you do your thing, Charlotte. Okay, so Spike, what's going on? Oh, this is sweet. I'm about to give you an email so you can get a prize. If other folks have, I saw a couple people say in in the chat as well that they um uh, that they had seen some stuff come up, but I wasn't clear. That was the first one that I saw. So if anybody else has been cracking yeah. hashes in the background using the nerd list, post in, in now saying, "Hey, I crack some stuff." Mm -hmm. We'll put Tweet you on screen. Nerd listing, submit a nerd list with uh, with a mm -hmm. um, screenshot as well for the flags. Yeah. Screenshot. If you crack 10 hashes, screenshot that and tweet it. We'll retweet you right now. That's really cool. If there's if there's usernames, redact them, obviously. Yes. Uh, that's another thing that is a requirement. And let me take a moment now as we're actually seeing some, some real successes here, which is awesome. Uh, one of the rules, and you can take a look in nerd listing, there are some rules to, uh, to this project. One of the rules is do not disclose any user information. You need to either fully, because you're going to stumble over, you know, user tricks on this one. Do uh, fully redacted, do not submit a, a flag that contains personal information that you have not redacted, even if you've discovered it. Another request or another requirement is that before you are, before I, I call you a winner. Um, if you have any way to identify, if anything has come up that lets you see who these people are, you need to reach out to them to the best of your ability. Just This is an honor system thing and let them know that some of their information has gone public. So do, do your best. You may or may not be able to find them, but the rules are don't expose anybody. And if you find yep. someone's information and you can find them and reach them, tell them about it. Yep. Awesome. So this has been this has been wonderful. Um, we're we're right over the hour, but this is great. We actually got a uh, password cracker. We had some people participating in the comments here. We, I think at this point we can just let it run and kind of wrap things up. I want to pitch it over to both of you. Have any final thoughts that you want to share with the folks that are on or might watch this later about the nerd list and and what you've been doing? I'll let Charlotte go. Yep. I don't think I have anything more to add, though I will say that people, if they have any questions, which I keep looking down at my phone for, um, they should send them in chat, and I'm happy to answer anything about my involvement, what I do with it, et cetera, et cetera. Wonderful. The number one thing I want to tell people uh, before I let Ian kind of take us out here on this one, I think uh, Charlotte's probably going to post some some ongoing screenshots and, and yeah. anything else that that gets cracked. Oh, I'm I'm glad we got some stuff cracked. You know, even if it was a uh, oh, and we've got we got some more folks that are emailing me right now and saying that they've uh, they've cracked hashes of this today. This is awesome. You're you're going to win a silver tile. Um, you're going to if you're the if you've uh, if you're going to commit something new to the nerd list, you got a great geek password. Somebody just committed the three passwords from uh, The Expanse season one for the uh, the Rosinante. Um, so yeah, this is, it's so great to see people doing and, and participating in this. Um, I, I want you to win. I want this stuff out of my house. Like I got this for you. Please, please come, please come get it from me. Um, so I, I want people to just remember, I think so many of us have experienced gatekeeping and information security. Um, you know, have experienced being made fun of for being at a basic level, for not like knowing enough technically. Um, and you know, the I am I'm I'm here to be a ban hammer of doom for anybody that that causes a problem with this. And I, I mean, as a snake, I'm happy to do it. And and there's a reason why we've kept this um, a project that isn't all the way community yet in terms of just open commits, because I want to have the right, and I have done this a couple of times before, I want to have the right to unilaterally smash passwords that may be legitimate or or uh, or hashes, but I've, I've killed a couple of racist passwords, actually. Mm. Um, and I've done that just to kind of said, I'm fine with this, smash. Um, so we've got a project here that is kind of being benevolently dictated a, a little bit on, <laughs> on purpose. Um, I want people to feel comfortable. I don't mind profanity, but we're gonna be we're gonna be a little proactively anti-racist on this one. So don't be a jerk. But if you if you have something that is fun and filled with joy and a nerd password that you found from somewhere, um, especially ones that you see used commonly in admin systems or jokes from anything, I mean, jokes from 1980s fantasy and science fiction classics are probably gonna gonna hit well with this crowd. <laughs> so yeah. contribute. Hash, uh, crack hashes legally um, be honest be careful and the 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 step beyond like the meta step beyond all of this is then take this and go teach somebody else how to do it because this is the first step to getting into super understanding how we do information security and and why we think the way we do and how we get information and what we do with it this is basically magic to people <laughs> that have never been in information security and you're a wizard Harry, you know <laughs> And showing, showing this to someone who 
who's interested in security but doesn't hasn't dug into this side of things it's often like a enlightening with the whole it's basically magic side but it's i found that it's often like a bit sobering knowing how easy and quick it can be just to find this stuff even with like not much compute power not a massive fancy word list not anything special like the fact that anyone could pick this up get digging into this get involved and crack actual passwords is a little bit sobering <laughs> it is but also super fun <laughs> ian thank you so yeah. much for hosting us. besides orlando thank you everybody mm -hmm. out there john strand originally for hosting this project at wild west hack and fest and giving us a chance to get it out there yeah yeah, thank you both for being on, Charlotte. This was wonderful. The comments were great. And Tara, thanks. So we will uh, thank you and have a have a great day. I'm going to jump back out of here and we'll we'll send this off here. So there we go. So everyone, that was hacking and cracking and and the nerd list and getting into password hash cracking. So um, again, we are doing a few of these coming up where we're going to do the pre-show we're going to want to get you excited about b-sides orlando coming up uh fully virtual on november 6th and 7th tickets are on sale now workshops will go up shortly tons of new exciting information coming out over the next couple weeks where we want to get people engaged early we've got our discord out there so if you sign up now you'll find uh information on how to get onto our discord and get engaged there and then also through these these pre-show talks so again i'm ian meyer um, thank you for taking the time on a Saturday to listen in and learn and grow and and be part of the information security community. So with that said, I'm going to send us out. And again, thanks for being here.